Our scripture focus today is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. In verse 14, Paul writes that if Christ was not risen, then our preaching is in vain and our faith is in vain. And then as he keeps writing and we get down to verse 42, it says, So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown perishable is raised imperishable. And what is sown in dishonor is raised in glory. And what is sown in weakness is raised in power. What Paul is telling us is that if there is no resurrection, there is no gospel or no good news. And see, the gospel is not just that Jesus was resurrected. The gospel is that you and I can be resurrected as well. There is, however, one catch. And that's what precedes a resurrection. It's death. There is the natural death. And for this death, we have the blessed hope of the resurrection. And when Jesus comes back, mine will be empty because I'm going to get up. Then there's the issue of being spiritually dead. That's interesting because the way the Bible puts it is that we're alive to sin, but dead to Christ or dead in the Spirit. But when I make the choice to follow Jesus, what actually happens is I have to die to my old life. I have to die to sin. And the Bible tells me in Romans and in Colossians that Going down in the waters of baptism, it actually represents my burial. But coming out of the waters represent my spiritual resurrection. So even as it relates to a spiritual death, because of grace through faith, I'm going to be resurrected. I am going to get up. Sometimes. Life itself throws things at us that can make us despair even of this life, as Paul says in 2 Corinthians 1 and 8. Things can hit us so hard and knock us down that it actually makes us uncertain as to whether or not we will ever get back up. Or if we do get up, if we'll be the same afterwards. And then as believers, it's not just life that hits us. We also have an enemy, Satan, who Jesus says come to, comes to kill as well as to steal from us and to destroy. Now, we know that by faith, we have the assurance of getting up from the natural death and from the spiritual death. But that same faith should give us the assurance of getting back up behind the blows that life throws at us and Satan's strategies against us. Things hit us, and they can affect us so deeply. They can catch us off guard, and they do knock us off of our feet. But we bounce back because of our faith, which comes from hearing the word. And that faith should be a pillar of our thought life. There are four errors in our thought patterns that actually make it difficult to bounce back when we've been knocked down. The first one is when we think whatever happens is personal. We feel like or believe that life has singled us out and that we're victims. And that's when people say things like, life is not fair. And so when difficult, confusing times come, people feel like they're a baseball. The second error in our thought pattern that makes it difficult for us to bounce back is that when something happens to us, we think it's permanent. We think that there's no recovery from it, that there is no ability to bounce back, that whatever happened, happened, and it will never get better. That's when we don't feel like we're a baseball. We feel like we're an egg. and that we can't ever get back together. Thirdly, 
we think that it's preventable. But the Bible tells us that all who live godly will suffer persecution. And fourthly, and this is where believers really err, we think that we're supposed to be perfect. But there's a scripture in Proverbs 24, in verse 16, it says, For though the righteous man falls seven times, they rise again. Now notice who it is that's doing the falling. It's the righteous man. But notice also that he's resilient and he has the ability to rise again, to get up, to bounce back. Yes, I know that in Matthew 5 and 48, Jesus says, be perfect as my father is perfect. But that word does not mean to be without flaw. That's the King James translation of the word. What it means is to be mature. It means to be fully grown. It means to be complete. Now you and I both know that no baby comes here complete. It has to go through the process. Actually, that exact same word in Hebrews 5.14 says, or, or is translated fully grown. And it says that when you are fully grown, then you can eat meat. So you're not perfect because you're saved. You're perfect because you increase, because you grow because you keep getting better, because you're maturing, and because you learn how to get up. And so the gospel is not that you won't fall. The gospel is that you won't stay down. The gospel is, I'm gonna get up. Being in Christ does not excuse me from being knocked down. What it does is it equips me to deal with difficulty and to bounce back. Now, there are three things that I do in Christ to keep me with the resilience and the ability to bounce back. First, in Christ, I renew my mind. Now, this process of renewing the mind is really about putting in new information because the old information got me to where I was but if I'm going to continue to be resilient and beyond that continue to ascend, I need to, in Christ, put in new information. And that renewing of my mind actually makes me mentally strong. And I learn to regulate my thoughts. I learn to bring them into captivity. And I learn to control my emotions. And I recognize that being knocked down is just a part of life, failure and falling. What I also know is that it's not permanent and it's not personal. Secondly, in Christ, I maintain my hope. And that's what help me, helps me keep my perspective when I'm going through things. Hope reminds me that there is the other side of whatever my this is. There is an after. So I can't always control what knocks me down. But my hope in my renewed mind helps me control how I respond to what knocked me down. Thirdly, in Christ, I nurture my identity through the word. Now that's the most important one. It's critical that I know who I am. And who am I? I am who God says I am. I can't let circumstances define or redefine me. I can't let the things that knock me down make me feel like I'm a victim. The scripture teaches me, God teaches me, that I am an overcomer. And so I am who God says I am. And through this, in Christ, I learn to strengthen myself. I'm able to recover whenever I'm knocked down. And I always bounce back. That means I'm not a baseball and I'm not an egg. I'm like a basketball. I bounce back. I may go down, but I come back up. Now, what makes a basketball come back up? 
Well, it's the shape and it's the air inside. Now, in application to this, I am being shaped into the image of Christ and I have his air inside of me, his spirit, his breath in me. So I may go down, but I'm coming back up. I may go down, but I bounce back. So do not be defined by your falling or your failure. Be defined by your shape or that you're in the shape or the image of Christ and be defined by the air that's in you, that you have his spirit, his life in you. Because as long as you're in this life, there's a strong likelihood that you will be knocked down, that things may knock you off your feet. But remember what Paul said in our text, you may go down in dishonor, but you're coming up in glory. You may go down in weakness, but you're coming up in power. In other words, what Paul is saying that we may go down but if we go through the process of being, here it is, perfected, we will be better. So, I may go down, but the gospel is that I will get up. That's the good news.